In this video, we are going to talk about antenna design and not only about how to do PCB lay layout, but also how to measure it and maybe tweak it and find out if your antenna works correctly. Is that right, Kaya? Yeah, <laughs> or at least uh, figure out if the antenna is the correct length to resonate at the correct frequency uh, and to see or try to optimize it for your custom design. Okay, so as an example, we are going to use uh, one of your chips, uh, but yeah. basically everything what we are going to talk about will apply on any kind of chip which is using antenna, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Everything is going to be very similar. Yeah, it's going to be exactly the same. We're going to have a look at our uh, DK on the uh, one of our, our 53 series. We, find uh, it. we can show it, I think. Yeah, we can show it here. Uh, so it's this one. Uh, it's the development kit for 5340. Uh, but it will be uh, applicable to all other radios that works on 2.4 gigahertz. Okay. Um, so this. we are going to talk about Bluetooth, but 2.5 uh, is also Wi-Fi or... These are yeah. like the most common antennas, what people will. Yeah. So we will uh, talk a little bit about this uh, layout, uh, about how to do it properly, and then what else we have prepared. Can you yeah. show something else? Yes. Uh, so we're also going to talk about where to start when you design, uh, and also with optimizing the radio, because uh, the radio on the 5340 is... Um, is um, uh, need to be tuned on the outside, so you filter the output to get optimized uh, output power and uh, harmonics. So you have so a real board to... on your table. Can we see? It? Yes. And we, we can have see also the, the tools real board. Yeah. And everything. You will be doing some soldering. Yeah, definitely. So um, we will. I will try my best to show you guys uh, how. I'm going to do the uh, the measurements and uh, solder on external uh, coax cable to be able to to measure both on the radio and the antenna on my spectrum analyzer and network analyzer. Yeah. So we so, will be using uh, what kind of tools for measuring we will be using? Let's see. We're going to use um, uh, the spectrum analyzer from uh, Rodenswatch mm -hmm. and the network analyzer from uh, Rodenswatch as well. And why do uh, we need them? Because we will see how good. Yeah, we will. We will. Uh, we will see the conductor the measurements. So on the radio side, we will uh, see the the um, output um, um, power and the harmonics, and we will also. Um, tune the frequency accuracy so that we know that the carrier that we're sending out is on the correct um, uh, frequency. And on the um, uh, network analyzer, we will have a look at the, uh, the impedance match of the antenna uh, and also to see that the resonance frequency is at 2.4, which is where, what uh, frequency we're using to sending our, our um, uh, signal on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I look forward for this. Yeah. <laughs> so, Good. where do we start? Uh, so, where do we start? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna first uh, start off by figuring out what um, uh, IC we want to use, and that we always uh, already decided on. We're gonna try using the fifty three forty. So, uh, you go to to our web page. Um, and then you type in um, uh, our um, name or the product name. You find our product. Uh, you see that it has the specification you want. You want to choose the correct size uh, of the chip, uh, depending on how many GPIOs you want. And then you go to downloads. Uh, on downloads, you will find our reference design, mm -hmm. download it, and open it in Altium. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, like to point out, even if it's a different chip, the steps will be exactly the same. So exactly the same. Go to so. chip manufacturer website, 
find uh, some uh, documentation, design guide, maybe reference board, open yeah. it and continue. And and uh, and do the reference design. Yeah. And then also on our, um, uh, we have our info center. This is nice. This is nice where you have uh, our product specification. Uh, here you also find the reference circuitry mm -hmm. uh, and a PCB layout example. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, all of the reference circuitry is found in the downloads. So open that one. There you will find PDF and Altium files. And you will find also the Gerber files if you use a different designer than Altium when designing your board. Mm -hmm. So what is uh, important when designing this uh, antenna circuit? So when we have a look on, on, on electronic circuit connection, what is important there? What do we need to be careful about? It's a lot of things, but uh, the most important thing when you, you, have, you have a design with a, a radio on board, uh, you always should start with the antenna. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is especially the antenna placement. Mm -hmm. So you need to like uh, think about what are you designing? Are you designing something that is going to be put on a wall? Uh, is, is this going to be a standalone product? Is it going to be something that you put on uh, on your body, like a, a watch? Mm -hmm. um, and where should then the antenna be placed to have as much room as possible to uh, resonate and send out uh, a signal? So that's uh, antenna placement is maybe the most important stuff when you when you design something with a radio on board. So usually it's somewhere on the edge of the board or and then placed inside of the product uh, where yeah. there is a lot of space around the antenna. Yeah. So for instance, if you have a watch, uh, you would probably put it on, on like the edge, mm -hmm. but not on the, on the top or bottom edge. Mm -hmm. Maybe the top edge would be the perfect one because then you will have the most room. It will be farthest away from, from the person who's wearing it. Mm -hmm. Um, but on a, a wall, it would be on the on the PCB side that is towards you. Or if you use the spectra as an example, and then maybe in the top as well, top mm -hmm. left or right corner, or mid center. Um, so as an example, we we are going to have a closer look at the DK, but it's placed on the edge uh, top. Can you show by cursor? I see where the antenna is, here, but I... do you see the the on the right, yeah, I can see our cursor. Yeah, so you can yeah. you can use it. And we also have it here as well. Yeah, and the antenna is on the edge where the Nordic uh, text yeah, is. Where yeah, where the Nordic, Nordic logo is. So it's you can see the the Nordic uh, yeah. website. Yeah, that's actually the the um, um, the antenna. But you can also see the uh, here in Altium more clear uh, where you see uh, the antenna, and this is a EC quarter wave uh, monopole uh, printed PCB antenna. Uh, and just so it said, it's free to just copy it if you want an EC antenna design. So this uh, is like it, the simplest one or? Uh... Yeah, this is uh, one of the simplest antennas you can use. It's easy, very easy to design. Um, and uh, it's quite effective. Uh, it takes some room. That's like the downside of this one. It, it, it recovers some room because it, it needs to be approximately uh, 22 millimeters length. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also need five millimeters of clearance to the ground mm -hmm. uh, to have room for a resonation. And, but uh, you only need one, one um, uh, matching component to match it. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to adjusting the, um, the length of the antenna. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so where, where, where do you get uh, information about size and dimensions of this antenna? Uh, so we actually have on our website, uh, we have um, uh, down here as a, on the info center, sorry, we have application notes and white papers. So we actually have a white paper on how to design a, a Quarter wave printed monopole antenna for 2.45 gigahertz. When you can you scroll down a little bit, I would like to see what. Yeah, uh, what in the in the white paper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and here you can see um, 
you can actually form it in with a bend or it can be straight. Mm -hmm. And this would be a, a definitely the most effective one mm -hmm. because it has multiple rooms. So it would be a less directional, but when you bend it, it will be a more directional antenna. Um, and the one which you have on your PCB, it, you don't it's have it the yet. one with the bend, right? Ah, okay. Yeah. So it's just like... Uh, so you can uh, bend it any way you want, just keep 10 millimeters from the edge of the ground plane? As long as you don't uh, add like many curves, it would be okay with like one one bend mm -hmm. if you, <laughs> you would say so, but yeah, you can okay bend it in different directions but then you also might have to adjust the length a bit different when you bend it so you can basically design it on your pcb and then when you will be doing the tuning of the antenna then you will find out what kind of tuning you have to do to make yeah, it yeah so the, good. and the recommend uh, recommendation is that you um you could use this as a base but you have to add some extra length to it Mm -hmm. because uh, theory and practice is not always uh, the same. So you can calculate the approximate length of the antenna, but always add, always add a couple of millimeters of length. It so makes you can, the during process. measurement, you can cut it off or something? Yeah, ah, that's okay. exactly what, and that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. Uh, I haven't produced a DK with the longer antenna, but I've added on okay. some length to the antenna to show you. And then we will you... remove it. Yeah, okay. the effect of actually uh, adjusting the length. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can we go back to the electrical schematic? So yeah. uh, how the antenna is... Uh, you, you can go back to the info center and yeah. just go back to the pages with the schematic circuit. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Uh, so basically antenna connection, as we can see, is two... You have there two capacitors and one inductor. So how this do you is... decide on these components? Why we need these components? What is it? Yeah, so this is exact, uh, this is actually the, the radio matching components. Um, but I showed you here. And uh, then you can see I've added on some matching components for the antenna as well. And uh, I call them set one, set two, set three. Mm -hmm. um, it's just to show you that in most cases, you need three matching components for the impedance matching of the antenna. Uh, but in some cases, uh, like with the, the printed monopole quarter wave antenna, it would be fine to just keep set three mm -hmm. uh, because that is efficient enough. But if you go for, uh, for instance, an off the shelf chip antenna, most antenna vendors will recommend you to use a P or T network, uh, but then at least three discrete matching mm -hmm. components. So P network means the C1, L1, C21? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, shaped as a P, <laughs> yeah. and then the T network is just the opposite. Then you would um, uh, add another series component and remove one of the, the parallel, parallel components. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. Uh, so if someone is designing antenna circuit, ideally they would like to add these three components, C1, L1, yeah. C21. And uh, even if in final design, or some of them may not be fitted, but it's good to have them to tweak the antenna Definitely circuit. add the footprint. And that's also why I say, uh, usually say a P network, because if you end up not fitting them, uh, the trunk components are able to not just not be connected. But in a, in a series component, that would be need to be uh, add a, a zero resistor, for instance, mm -hmm. to, if you end up not populating that component. Okay, so, so what is important about placement of these components and parameters of these components, like materials or size or something like this? Uh, so uh, what we say is follow the reference. Mm -hmm. So if our reference is to use uh, zero, uh, 402 mm -hmm. or 0201 components, use that. Mm -hmm. But it's also size dependent, so it's not um, let's say, for instance, with the, the 5340 series, we use 0201 components, mm -hmm. which is usually maybe a bit higher price than 0 0.4. And, um, and then, um, so the only thing is that just follow the specification that it's um, actually RF components and that um, you have to be aware that the value of the components will change 
when the size of the component change. Mm -hmm. And that's why we always do kind of this final tuning. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the radio components, uh, use the reference um, uh, components values, but then uh, send it to Nor Nordic or tune it yourself. And then uh, note that there might be an adjustment mm -hmm. to the values. So you so can... don't don't, ju ju don't order a ton of of the actual values that you put in the schematic. Wait until you're done with the tuning, mm -hmm. and then you can order. So you can do this tweaking in your company. I I yeah. think you do it. If someone yeah, will send this, it to you, this is you... this is what I do. Uh, helping our customer finding the uh, optimizing the the RF and antenna design, um, and then also. Uh, doing it on uh, testing the prototypes from our customers, tweaking the radio and, and tuning the antenna. Is it paid service or uh, you do No, it? this is a free service that I do for customers. Um, so this is something you can find on uh, our um, uh, developer zone. So um, I put the link here. I can show you. Uh, find help and... Uh, uh, on this is not very often seen these days like someone is really trying to help their customers for free but yeah that, that's very nice yeah that's we have uh, i think that is uh one of our main uh like one of our best selling points we are actually quite many people working full-time supporting our customers in their uh, development of their design. Um, so on DevZone, you can uh, search for answers, see if someone have, if you run into a problem during development, it's like oh, someone else needs to have run into this before. Go to DevZone, uh, add it as a question or, or search on DevZone first and see if you can find something. Uh, and you will also find uh, usable guides and blogs and uh, from Nordic, but also from other uh, mm -hmm. people who develop with Nordic. So, for instance, under um, guides, we have hardware design, test and measurement. And here I just released a general PCB design guide uh, guidelines for the 53 series, uh, where you can maybe have a bit more detailed explanation of what we are going through a bit today. Yeah. Um, and also uh, telling you that you can make a private ticket, uh, ask for a hardware review, uh, so you can upload your uh, your files without um, everyone seeing it, but only uh, the people from Nordic. And then we can help you and give you feedback on your design and point you to a direction where you can improve your design. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So well, now good. we can go back. Because yeah. I would like to uh, talk about placement of the components. Can we have a look on on the Altium? Altium? Yeah. Yeah. So where do we need to place these uh, components? Yeah. So and uh, we can have a look here. This is the um, antenna output. Uh, yeah, antenna output on uh, of the NRF. So uh, this is the placement of the radio matching network. Mm -hmm. And this is quite important to pay attention to uh, because the, the length of this trace actually has an effect. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that uh, you actually follow that. So um, that's the first capacitor? Yeah. Okay. So I actually have a picture of it. So, mm -hmm. that, uh, so the track actually works as an inductor mm -hmm. as well. So it's uh, it helps... Um, with the actual matching of the output impedance and filtering. Mm -hmm. and that's an important thing here that the output uh, matching network actually works as a filter for filtering away harmonics. Mm -hmm. uh, and when designing uh, a 2.4 Bluetooth device or radio device, you need to go through certifications. And they have uh, strict, uh, very strict requirements that you need to meet to be able to have a, a product out there sending on 2.4 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. So uh, so this, this sign here is uh, quite important to follow. 
Uh, so we say try to follow the, the, the reference design as close as you can. Including placement. As, including placement of the, the matching components for the radio. Okay. So, so when you actually start the design, you, you decide on the placement of the antenna, as we said, where is the optimal placement. You place the antenna and then you place the rest of the RF path and the NRF. And after you're done with the NRF, then you place everything else on your board. Okay, so this because is a little bit, a little bit special because you have there also the connector for the coax. Yeah, and so this is a UFL connector that is not needed mm -hmm. in a, a end product. To it's just since this is a development board, uh, it's nice for people who develop with it to easily be able to connect to. A, a signal analyzer to have a look at the output or connect a, a, an external antenna, which is also valid to attach to this connector. So how do so, you use this? You directly solder the external antenna or because if you put there the connector, then also this PCB antenna will be connected to. No, so this is actually a connector with the switch. Ah. So when you connect something to this connector, you disconnect the, the PCB antenna. Can, can we find it on internet? I, I didn't know yeah. this kind yeah. of connector exists. And that does, we, I can find it in the boom here, actually, this exists. And um, maybe you can click in Altium on this component, maybe it will show the... Yeah, I have it here, so just give me a second. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is a very useful um, connector um, to use uh, in maybe development, but it's it's not needed in most cases in an mm -hmm. end product. Yeah. So um, yeah, I can. It's here. Okay. Yeah. MM eight thousand one hundred thirty. So if someone would like to use it, yeah, they can. We can do it. Mm. Okay. Mm. So this was from the schematic point, from the yep. PCB point. Uh, let's say we are going to. Okay, there is something else about uh, PCB design. What is important? Stack up, and also layout. So what yeah. is important about? Uh, Okay, let's talk about what you think is more important. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, as I said, like we uh, we talked about the antenna placement uh, and then place the NRF, but then you need something to connect the antenna with the chip with the radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, the point here is that they need an um, a way to to meet. So when we tune the radio, we tune it to around 50 ohm, so it has a 50 ohm impedance. And then they do the same with the antenna, so they have a 50 ohm meeting point. Mm -hmm. So between these, we kind of want to uh, uh, make sure that we get as less loss as possible on our signal. So then we want to add a transmission line. Mm -hmm. 50 ohm uh, transmission line. A 50 ohm transmission line, and we want it uh, uh, to be, in our case, a Kuplaner waveguide. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is it make... means there is copper also on the side of the track. Correct. It's a copper on the side, which is isolating it from other tracks on, on our PCB. And you have a reference ground. Yeah. Um, so I opened this AppCAD, which is a free calculation tool. Altium has a calculation tool as well, but I know that not everyone who developed developed with Altium. So AppCAD is a nice tool to use. It's probably much more <laughs> different tools to use, but this is quite nice. And uh, we put in the parameters for the DK. Um, and then uh, you can see if we change the, the width of the, the track, you can see the impedance of the track changes. So uh, try, try to optimize it for your design uh, with the substrate you're using. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, not too wide, and then adjust also the, the distance to the ground on the sides will also uh, affect the, um, the um, impedance. Mm -hmm. What I yeah. notice and what is interesting, basically, 
I think uh, this is four layer PCB. We can see it in the right panel. Yeah, it's four layer PCB. Four layer. Yeah. Uh, but basically, the ground reference plane is on the layer four, not on layer two. That is correct. And that is, uh, if you have the possibility, we recommend that you uh, you do the same, that you do the reference ground on the, the bottom. And then you put a cut out under the RF path in mm -hmm. the inner layers. And this is just to reduce stray capacitance. Mm -hmm. It's just to try to, uh, as best as we can, try to not have noise on the RF path. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if you have, let's say you have a super small board, but you still have four layers, you want to be able to maybe use this space in the, in the two, on the bottom layer to routing, or maybe you need to place a component under it, then add the reference ground in one of the, in one of the inner layers. Mm -hmm. Um, let's, uh, if, um, so that, that's fine, but we try our very best to to recommend that you you try to put the cutout in the inner layers mm -hmm. and use the, the reference ground on the bottom layer. Uh, it but means when, have... when the bottom uh, uh, when it is on the bottom layer, it means also the RF track is a little bit wider than it would be if you place it on second yeah. layer. Yeah, and that will be affected. Like as we could see here, that you could if you change uh, the height here. Uh, so uh, yeah, you need let's see to it's make thinner two track. instead, so it's closer. You will see the impedance go down. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, so just um, just adjust for your custom design. So okay. uh, again, uh, don't ahead. copy it directly from the reference design. This uh, with the track unless you have the same substrate stack and up. same layer stack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to go back to the calculator. I'm just, because I haven't, yeah. I never seen it. What else is there? What kind of calculators? Can you click on calculate or what? Uh, yeah, like if I click no, on calculate. Uh, or what, are, what other calculators are there? Or main menu, maybe main uh, menu. Uh, let's see. In the top, there yeah. There it is, yeah. So you can see that you have different uh, calculations. So here is just transmission lines. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can do microstrip mm -hmm. and then uh, quarks round. Yeah. Okay. You have a lot of options here. I have only used the uh, cool planar waveguide in this one though. So, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's a quite nice tool. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. so what else is important there? That's everything what we need to be careful about. Oh, under antenna, there must be no ground. Or no copper. No ground under the antenna. If you do a PCB, uh, PCB printed uh, antenna, you have off the shelves antennas, chip antennas where you can have zero clearance. Uh, so if you you are maybe let's say if you design something that is, yeah, a super small, or in some case you you need something that is zero clearance to to. Uh, reference ground or ground, uh, you can go online and see if you find an off-the-shelf antenna. Mm -hmm. the antenna vendors, uh, chip antenna vendors, they usually have like a selection guide or they help you find uh, the correct uh, antenna for your design. And also if you have very little space, a chip antenna might be a good solution. But just note that when you go down on the antenna, in decreases in size the uh, efficiency also decreases that's what i wanted to point out i think yeah. i i've done a couple of videos on this topic and yeah. uh, other people told me exactly the same thing if you use mm. smaller and smaller and smaller antenna mm. it's not going to work as well as bigger antenna <laughs> no and that's kind of it's just the way it is this is a quarter wave you could have you've used a half wave or full wave then the antenna would be Bigger. Quite large, but uh, um, but again, it, it would be more effective. Uh, but you have to find a, something for your design. If if you're designing something small, which you need a range of within, like your work desk, for instance, maybe it doesn't matter if the antenna is quite small. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're designing something that you need uh, a more significant range, then you have to pay even more attention to choosing a more eff effective antenna. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's also kind of, 
in yeah as you go um after doing a tuning for instance with nordic test your product test the prototype see does it meet my performance demand mm -hmm. and is the the performance demand realistic for the design you have created do you yeah. also measure the range of the antenna in your lab no no okay. no. no we don't do but, no, I, uh, I heard it's not so simple <laughs> no uh the easiest and, and that's why i say like for your design test for with your test conditions you mm -hmm. have chosen what you're making test it in your just like as your the your um, end user would have used the product is it sufficient enough is so it, place uh, is it where it, it should be and go far away or find out yeah. where the signal yeah. is still available and where that's the easiest making. cheapest way to test that <laughs> you have sufficient range for your product okay if it's a remote control to to your tv for instance you know that most people wouldn't place the couch more than six meters away from the tv yeah, i wouldn't watch tv from the other room yeah <laughs> so yeah so just like try to test for your specific product and then again when you develop and and um, and are in the development uh, phase use the dk for instance or in the development kits for for testing the application and then you can also see does the DK have sufficient mm -hmm. uh, range for for my design? Mm -hmm. Maybe I can can use a, a printed monopole mm -hmm. antenna um, to use in in your end design if you have the room for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know you also review uh, these layouts. So yeah. what kind of mistakes you have seen mm, people do in this antenna design? Uh, so one of the typical mistakes is uh, not uh, seeing that you need one separate matching network for the antenna and the radio. They kind of uh, you assume that the, the matching network on our reference design is for the antenna, not for the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, that's why there are two sets of the components. One is for the output from the chip, and the other one is for the input of the antenna. Correct. So mm -hmm. in between there, it's a 50. Can we, can we show what I'm talking points. about so everyone yeah. understands? That we can. So here. There you yeah. go. So yeah. we are talking. So the C1, L1, C21 is for the output from the chip, and Z1, yeah. Z2, Z3 is for the input to the antenna. Correct. But in your design, in the Altium design, are there Z1, Z2, Z3? No, it's only a set three. Ah, okay, it's only set three. Yeah, for, and it's, because for it's where the printed. connector is, I think. Yeah. Can you show it? I, I... Yeah, of course. Um, you can see it here. Yeah. So you can see that it's one uh, shunt component here. Okay. So for yeah. antenna input, uh, you often only need one component. Uh, it depends on the antenna. Mm -hmm. So as uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, for a printed monopole and uh, quarter wave antenna, um, adjusting the length and uh, having one oh, component, you is can change other parameters of the antenna. Okay. Yeah, but for instance, for a chip antenna, off-the-shelf antenna, I'm not able, or you're not able, to change the chip mm -hmm. antenna or mm -hmm. the length of the antenna. So uh, to do impedance matching for a chip antenna, uh, you would probably need a full P or mm -hmm. T network. And then uh, I would say go with the suggestion from the antenna vendor. If the antenna vendor suggests that you use a P network, go for that. If they suggest a T network, go for that. And then follow the reference from the antenna vendor as well, following the footprint, the, the clearance to ground, um, how you place the, the matching component for the antenna. And if the antenna is uh, very close to the uh, output from the chip, uh, do you need still to separate matching or? Yeah, you still need to separate matching. Okay. Uh, not because it's not possible to match it together, but because it's a very difficult to validate that you have gone, done a good job, because then suddenly you have to do the measurements radiated, which is much more costly and time consuming um than to actually do it conducted mm -hmm. and the why we choose 50 ohm as a reference is because like all rf instruments has the 50 ohm reference mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So when we have this 50 ohm reference point in between the, the antenna matching and the radio matching, we can measure. You and, can measure it properly. And, yeah. And you precisely. can actually measure the output mm -hmm. of the radio. Is it sufficient enough? Uh, do we have the uh, output level we want? Do we have low enough harmonics? And then you can do the same looking towards the antenna, seeing that the impedance matching is good and the resonant frequency is at the correct frequency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, what what else usually, what kind of mistakes usually people do? Uh, yeah, then we have the, the routing directly under the RF path, that is a classic. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, we have the R so don't do power. This. Don't do this, don't do this. Don't do any routing under the, directly under the, the RF path, except from the reference ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but if so... there is reference ground, as we were talking earlier, if there is reference mm -hmm. ground, on layer two, for example, then yeah. there can be component routing on layer four, for example. Yeah, Okay. that's correct. So it, this is the example of the DK mm -hmm. where I kind of put the, the, the power um, routing under the RF pot. Don't do this, mm -hmm. do it in this way instead. So you have a proper clearance. Um, I can see. How do you know how you need to place the vias? Is there like a... I know there is some relationship between the distance between the vias and the frequency, but... Uh, yes, and uh, uh, it's not... Um, how do you say? In this small, <laughs> small in a way, or low frequency, it's not a low frequency, but in, in microstrip uh, or um, related, it's quite low frequency. It, it's not that relevant. Okay, so just place the vias. Uh... Place uh, multiple vias on the on the side of the on the um, coupling mm -hmm. on the um, on the ground reference ground on the side, um, and it's just a way to kind of isolate it and um, make sure you don't get interference on the RF path. Okay. So, um, but we uh, we don't have any direct recommendation on okay. the distance is just like enough <laughs> okay so that's the thing you will you g will get feedback from me if you haven't put any vias okay i will suggest <laughs> placement of vias for you but um um yeah okay try to have um, a good amount of numbers of vias what um else? what else yeah and then um uh, as you said if you have the reference uh, ground here it, it's uh, it's not as critical but make also sure that the actual reference ground covers all the way from the antenna feed and cover the entire mm -hmm. um, um, IC uh, or the the center pad of the IC to make sure that you have a, a common reference ground uh, and return path for noise mm -hmm since how, the radio is located here. How big has to be the opening on the layer 2 and layer 3 in this area under the antenna? Uh, optimal, it would cover at least like the, the ground uh, vias mm -hmm. on the side of the reference. You can see it's quite wider mm -hmm. in, in this design. Uh, but um, covering like the vias is sufficient. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And then uh, we take it to like the the first radio matching components include the first radio matching component and then okay. just do the same on the on the both uh, mid layers okay yeah. okay so we talk about the components uh, mm -hmm. we talk about how to calculate 50 ohms so how to come up with the trace width based on yeah. the stack up mm -hmm. uh, it's basically ready or isn't it? Are there any other mistakes what we should talk about? Not typically on the RF part. So I think we're good uh, on this topic. Okay. Um, so basically we have our PCB and now yeah. we would like to <laughs> measure it or tweak it. Correct. Correct. Okay. So um, what I'm going to try to show you is uh, first uh, I can show you on Altium actually. First, uh, I'm going to use the connector mm -hmm. uh, and then we will uh, see the, the output of the radio. Mm -hmm. And the first uh, look we're going to have is that we're going to have uh, disconnected this um, and I put a zero ohm 
Mm -hmm. for, so we will see directly users. how the parameters of the output from the chip. Correct. Uh, and just to show you that when it's not properly uh, matched, you won't see the output that you would prefer. Okay. I'm yeah. curious how how do we know it's not properly matched? Uh, so you would see it on the the harmonics level. Okay. Okay. So I will change camera. Um, so uh, we have uh, this. Uh, we have this uh, here. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah. So the decay, and then we have the court from the um, uh, our signal analyzer, and then uh, the, it's connected. But <laughs> of course, we would need power and we need to be able to talk to the IC. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm connecting my interface with the DK. Do you need to run some special software to be able to do these measurements or it's enough just to power it up? Uh, for the 53 or for all our designs, actually we have uh, um, radio uh, example mm -hmm. and we oh, have okay so you other... upload this uh, code yeah. for a radio example yeah but for the 53 i'm actually writing directly to the registers mm -hmm. just uh, to um, um uh, yeah to turn on and off the radio how do you do that so, can, can we see it I'm uh yeah Maybe I can put it in the, because it's no, <laughs> it's just like a pre-made script. So um, you won't see much, but let's see. That's and very... if someone is using like different chips, they need to find this kind of firmware, correct? Yeah. So, there, so... basically there has to be something on the output to be able to measure it? Yeah, okay. because... Um, for instance, now you can see that the, it's connected, uh, it's and uh, it's on. So um, it's use the radio now is in in receiver mode, mm -hmm. but you don't see any interesting. Yeah, because it's in receiver mode. Correct. So now we're gonna um, put it in um, uh, a three dB uh, constant carrier output. Uh, and then we're going to start with um, uh, looking at the carrier. Uh, and then you can see that our uh, uh, marker on M1, and this is um, put at 2.402 because I'm sending on channel 2. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is like where we put the, uh, put the carrier, mm -hmm. but the actual carrier is... Uh, mm. Minus 15. Okay, so M1 slower. is the place where we should see the peak. Correct. And this is where this frequency accuracy comes in. Um, mm -hmm. Because we have a, a, an external crystal um, that um, controls the radio. And this is a 32 megahertz crystal. So this is actually something I do as well. I check the frequency accuracy. And you can adjust the load uh, capacitors mm -hmm. for the crystal to make sure that the uh, the carrier is within requirements. How do you do it in registers? Uh, yes, for this one, it would do it in, re in registers because on the 53 series, we have internal load capacitors for... Can we see the tool, what you are using to write to the registers? Uh, I'm just using um, uh, terminal on my computer. Thank so you. it's uh, no focus focus. Let's see, we can show it here. Um, so um, mm -hmm. for instance, if I, I change the, the load capacitors, uh, let's put it to 
we we have this uh, note of uh, what it equals to. Mm -hmm. So it should be around uh, 12 pico farad mm -hmm. for uh, for this design. So we add, um, let's see, 30, ah, let's go a bit higher. Let's go to 14 pico farad. So we can see the difference. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it moved can, to the... It moved. Light. So you can see that it it, it, it moves. Mm -hmm. So uh, so for this, the, the, um, uh, we need to, uh, to adjust the, um, the internal load capacitors mm -hmm. mm, to move the, the carrier frequency. So this is, um, again, something I do for the customers when I do the radio tuning. And uh, the requirements is that the accuracy has to be within 40 ppm. Um, and uh, but during a lifetime with the, the crystal, it will drift. Uh, so it, that's kind of part of the calculation when you calculate the, the end of life of your product. Mm -hmm. But then at least it's very important that when you start off, the accuracy has to be quite okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so what will happen if this peak is uh, not exactly at 2.402 megahertz? It's going to be less effective, or it may not even work. Uh, that kind of depends, um, because it depends how much. As I said, uh, uh, if it's within 40 ppm, uh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Then it, it, it will everything will kind of work. You will pass certification that is fine but as when you're out then your uh, receiver if that isn't the the same one so it's uh, equally <laughs> yeah drifted uh, yeah. it will have problems receiving the signal oh, okay yeah so um uh, so it's definitely important and also again uh, it's quite strict with the regulatory testing so that's also you when you're uh, designing a Bluetooth device, you're allowed to send within this frequency. And if your drift, the carrier is too far off, you're, yeah, you don't yeah, want to, okay. okay, you I don't want to go out there and use that product because you don't want to interfere with, with other frequencies that are restricted frequency okay. bands. Yeah. So uh, now we have. Um, we we see it move to the left, but we would like to move it. More where the M1 right. position is. So we need to set the yeah. correct capacitor. And you know the value? Yeah. So now the, the, the load capacitors are set to 13. Uh, and we would like to go down to 12. Mm -hmm. So when the carrier is lower than the center frequency you're sending, then the load capacitors are too high. Mm -hmm. So you need to go down in, in, mm -hmm. in the components values. So let's set it to uh, to 12 uh, picofarad. So again, you use the serial console and put there, change the Correct. register so settings. So I change the register settings and then um, we will see that the carrier mm -hmm. moves. It moved a little bit up. Yeah. So then the um, our new carrier uh, is it's 5.4. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so that's good enough? That's good enough. That's 2.5 ppm. So pretty How good. How do you know it's 2.5 ppm? So it's a quite easy calculation. Um, so you just take the, the delta frequency and then you um, um, put it over um, the, the carrier frequency. So you just do here it's 5.4 uh, and then over 2.402 oh, two. and okay. it's like 2.25 yeah and what is so, the maximum allowed maximum then the, the requirement for uh, radio regulator testing is 40 ppm okay yeah, that's the hard limit um 
So, so again, even before it was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but before it's good it to okay have it well. in the middle because of, I don't know, temperature or component changes or something they can... Yeah. And as I it. said, like, if you, when you choose a crystal for your design, you will see that it has expected lifetime and how much the drift will be mm -hmm. um, through over the years. So uh, the better the start is, the better it is, because then you will increase the lifetime of your product. Okay. So uh, the, to actually tune the, the frequency accuracy is quite good. If you are designing a product with a longer lifetime, if you're designing a hobby project, which is or a study project that is going to be used for a couple of months. This is not a big issue. It's more making sure that you uh, uh, that the receiver and transmitter is around the same frequency. Yeah. <laughs> so they are able to talk to each other. Yeah. Uh, so then let's uh, look at the next window. We have uh, the frequency and then we need to set the, the offset. So what do we see? <clears throat> so uh, now we're sending on uh, uh, zero dBm as the output power. This is the TX, also the, okay, the power you, setting for you, the radio. You change the mode in the chip and uh, set it as a transmitter? Yeah, so now it's sending as a constant carrier, uh, zero dBm output power. And then we want to have a look at that, the harmonics, mm -hmm. the level of the harmonics. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the level of the, the center frequency as well, or the, the, the signal we're sending. So you can see this is straight out, the, out of the radio, uh, no matching components. The output power is quite good. It's zero dBm, but the uh, harmonics are uh, quite high. High, it means like uh, minus 40 high. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, this is what we see is only half of the harmonics, correct? Uh, because on the on the left, there is 2.402. Yeah, so we don't see both sides, yeah, okay. but the levels are the same. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's correct. And then uh, what we want to do, we want to adjust the, the levels to be uh low enough mm -hmm. for the 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 limits during certification and i think the strictest limit in in um, like all the the tests or certification you can take around the world is minus 42. Mm -hmm. so then uh, it would pass even now or it would pass even now but it's on the edge in a, in a conducted stage okay because that's the um um we do the measurements conducted in a in a re uh, regular test. You would do a radiated test, uh, and most of the time, conducted and regular are or radiated tests are quite the same. But we like to give you a, a margin. So then, when we do conducted, we would like to see the harmonics more close to minus fifty. Mm -hmm. Uh, to make sure that you have some margin if you get some um, some noise or something on the, the radiated signal. Mm -hmm. And here we don't see them like uh, waves, but they are... No, we see like it square. as... Yeah. yeah, so you don't see all the noise and all the, the carries. And then um, uh, we see the estimated level on it. And then the point here is to show you that when you add a matching network, you will lower the harmonics mm -hmm. because you filter the output and then we try to find an impedance match or when the when the harmonics levels are low and then the output power is as we want it to be as the desired output power that the impedance of the output impedance of the radios is can we take good. screenshot from this so we can compare it when we yeah that we can that we can okay Okay. Mm -hmm, perfect. So in the next step, we would like to bring lower the M1, M2, and yeah, and the yeah. other. Correct. So, uh, we would like to bring down the M1 and M2. Below minus and, 50 decibels. Yeah, around. Okay. Between 48 and 60. Okay. Minus 48 and 60 would be okay. So um, how do we do this? 
spell, we uh, we do it by adding the components, the matching components. Mm -hmm. And then I will uh, change the camera again mm -hmm. um, so that you can... You can see what you are doing. See what I'm doing. Yeah. So um, I'm going to um, uh, change the DK here to a uh, uh, DK that has the matching network okay. on it, uh, populated on it. So, so you don't have to solder it on the camera. No, this one I don't have to solder on. Luckily, no. <laughs> you will see some soldering later on. So basically you remove the zero ohm resistor. Yeah. And now you put there the capacitor down... and inductor. Correct. Mm -hmm. Again, so... we, will we will show it uh, a little bit later on the picture what I'm talking about. So everyone knows what components we fit it. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, uh, yeah, we can show it here, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, so now these are populated mm -hmm. with, and what are the uh, values? Yeah. So 0 0.7 the... picofarad and 2.2 nano -hand. These are the default values. This is the, are the default values mm -hmm. from the reference design. Okay. And, um, uh, as I said, uh, this is where you start. So when you, if you do the design with this 53 component, then you start with these values mm -hmm. and then we uh when we tune it we might have to tweak the values a bit up or down mm -hmm. uh depending uh, on your custom design because ground this is the ground noise how you have routed it will affect the impedance match okay. of the uh, output of the radio. i'm curious how you will know what component to change and what direction to change it and how much to change it uh, you could do the uh, um, you could do it the way that you put it on uh, with the you look at the Smith charts, you look at the output and pins. Can we talk about Difficult... it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about it. That's fine. And then, um, uh, but the difficult thing with the radio is that the load for the radio will change. Mm -hmm. And then you have in different settings, you have different frequencies. Um, uh, so the, the optimal thing is there, we want to find the optimal load for the radio and how we see that is, as I said earlier, the, uh, the level of the harmonics and the level of the output. Okay. So that's why I say start with our reference design, because the easiest one, way to do this is just like test. If I uh, put the, the shunt component one level up, what happens? Okay. Yeah, we moved the second harmonics a bit down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so it's experimenting, not... yeah? Yes. Okay, let's have a look what changed. I'm curious. So uh, now let's see. Uh, we will do as we looked at zero dBm uh, last time, and then we might have to. Uh, move the frequency again. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, you will use the serial terminal. Even yeah. now, I can see it's much lower. Yeah, and that's also, uh, yeah, that's correct. It's much lower, even though it's it's not matched yet. But that's, um, uh, we will need to change the component values for the internal capacitors. And this is quite easy with the 53 it is that uh, you have the internal capacitors on the 52 series you need to have external capacitors mm -hmm. so you have to physically like solder different capacitor yeah on and off mm -hmm. uh, so here you can see uh, the output of the radio is a bit lower mm -hmm. on the output power oh yeah uh, i see it's not zero dbm That's what no you mean? it's m minus 0 0.8 mm -hmm. Uh, this device also has a setting for 3 dBm, so the output power is a bit higher for that. Uh, okay, it's bit, uh, a little bit lower because uh, before it was like straight connection from the chip to the 
mm-hmm. scope and now we actually at this component that's why it's a little bit lower and not zero yeah. dBm. Okay. Yeah. And also then the, the harmonics are way down, as mm-hmm. you can see. Um so you have and this is kind of, it's the way our forks is, is sometimes you have to compromise between the output power and, and get low enough harmonics. Mm-hmm. And that's why we try our best to find like the optimal match network for your specific design, mm-hmm. having a desired output power and, uh, and low enough harmonics. Mm-hmm. Can you show the original screenshot yeah. so everyone can see what is the difference? That's what we can do. We can uh, maybe yeah, do it like this. It's yeah, easy it's not, yeah. So you can see that the the, um, uh, the output power have gone a bit down, and then the 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 harmonics have gone quite much down. Okay. Yeah, and uh, just note that the 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 sum, uh, result summary down there is DBC and not uh, so, but it's very close to it since it's zero. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Mm. So in the next step, uh, after everyone tries these default components, then they yeah. should also try maybe a little bit higher or lower capacitor and a little bit higher or lower inductor to see what will happen. Yeah. So what does it mean a little bit like instead of 0.7, you 0.8 or what are the values? Yeah, or 0.7 or 0.8, it's not, it's not the normal. Uh, but maybe you could try oh, yeah, yeah. like 0.5. Okay. Or or go up to one okay. picofarad. Um, we have, I think it's on all the other fifty-two designs. It's usually zero point eight picofarad, and then on inductor side, I think it was two point two nanohertz, which is um, nanohertz. Sorry, mm-hmm. <laughs> that we start with. So try two point seven mm-hmm. and one point eight. Mm-hmm. Um, you might even go higher or even lower, but just like go with like the normal components values mm-hmm. so you don't have ha- end up having like a enormous cost yeah, because yeah, you yeah. find some obscure <laughs> uh component value uh so when i do this for um uh, for um and our customers i use like this uh, um rf uh testing kit uh-huh okay so there are these but, basic components that which are yeah. specially for RF. Yeah. So I guess they are from special materials and stable and. Yeah, it's high frequency uh, ceramic components. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember if I. Put... It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Don't worry. Okay, um, so we find but... these values, the best values, and what is the next step? So we have to then tweak the antenna input. Yeah. So now let's say that the radio is sufficiently uh, matched. For 50 ohms. Yeah, and then we have gone through the, the radio and we have done the, the crystal to correct the frequency accuracy. Um, so we know we're quite compliant with the radio. And then we try to do our best for the performance and that's on the antenna side okay and i've given the best output as we can from the radio sending as much power as we can on the desired setting and then we move on to the antenna okay so um we have uh, i have the network analyzer i have uh, uh put up two uh windows one with the smith charge so you know where the impedance is, and then we're gonna uh, try to look at the resonant frequency that is uh, okay. dipping at the correct frequency. How do, how do we connect? Uh, how we need to connect our board to? This? Yes, this is. Um, I'm gonna change the camera again so you can see. Uh, but um, on this one, I've connected an external. Um, um uh coax cable mm-hmm. um so um and to connect to uh to the network analyzer so, so you gonna... connected this external cable only to the antenna input only to the antenna so yeah. can we can so you show I, it I on sh- altium yeah yeah so in um uh you see here 
Uh, mm -hmm. This, I removed the, the connector mm -hmm. on, the, on the board, uh, and then I solder on a coax cable where mm -hmm. the inner cord is mm -hmm. connected to this pad, and then I solder on the, the shield, the ground shield. And if someone is not using this uh, connector, then they have to like cut it or what What they need to do to be able to measure the input of the antenna? Uh, either you have to turn it around the other way around or you have to remove it or add something to the connector and then solder on here. But I mean, if they don't have in the design, if they don't have the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, then you need to cut the okay. RF part. Yeah. So that's in, in important. Like... Uh, uh, you can imagine if uh, there wasn't a connector here, so these two traces were connected, I would cut the RF path. Mm -hmm. And that's also to not add extra length on the on the other side, just looking at the antenna. We want to just look at the antenna. We don't want to add uh, some extra mm -hmm. length to add a, a stub to our... Um, um, when we are actually only trying to look at the antenna, mm -hmm. because then it would be incorrect. It would affect the impedance. Mm -hmm. And others that are important when we do antenna tuning in uh, a normal antenna tuning, I would also require the, the enclosure, uh, batteries, everything that is close to the PCB, so that we can see uh, the effect of this mm -hmm. and what it, how it affects the antenna. Uh, and um, tune it accordingly to everything, all the surroundings. Okay, that's important so, to yeah. point out. Yeah, so with the, with the DK, we don't have an enclosure, so it makes today a bit more easy. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the... Um, uh, with the... Um, Housing or something, enclosure, Yeah, it, it can it actually affects. shift properties of the antenna. Correct. Okay. So it's important to do the antenna tuning uh, with the closest conditions as we can to like how the end product is going to be mm -hmm. used. So that's also why in some cases you have to be creative when you do antenna tuning. Maybe you have to wear the product if it's going to be close to, to a person um, or uh, if it's sometimes you maybe need more of the end product than just like where the PCB is. It depends. It depends on what you're designing and mm -hmm. what you're making. Yeah. Okay, and I would like to point out, so before we uh, only measured the part between the chip and the connector, basically the connector disconnected the antenna. Correct. The antenna was so not connected in the previous measurements. Correct. So okay. the UFL connector on our DKs are with a built-in switch. So when you connect something there, you disconnect the onboard PCB antenna. Oh, it's automatic. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and then, so you can connect uh, you can do radio measurements in that way, or you can also connect an external antenna if you want maybe a more long-range product. Maybe you want to use an external antenna, uh, which is more effective. Mm -hmm. I didn't know yeah. it works automatically. So automatically, as you connect something to the ch uh, to the connector, it will disconnect yeah. the antenna. Okay. It disconnects the antenna. So, okay. so let's it, measure the antenna. I'm curious. I'm very curious. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm going to do a bit of soldering as we do this, because I'm going to, um, first of all, um, we have the coax cable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this coax cable uh, is going to be added to the to the um, port from the um, uh, signal uh, vector analyzer. So um, I need to adjust for the, the extra length that the coax cable is introducing. Um, so, so you need to adjust the length of what? Uh, it's just like. Oh yeah. So you are going to measure it with the coax cable first. Yeah. Okay. So this coax cable is connected to the same analyzer, but I have a, uh, a same one connected to the to the vector analyzer. Mm -hmm. So we, I connect it to, to mm -hmm. here. Uh, so I do the offset. Mm -hmm. Can we see it, what we are doing? Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought I was showing you that. But... So. Uh... Okay. Um, <clears throat> so what I do, I adjust the delay 
uh, and that is just because when I so when we um, um, calibrate this instrument, we kind of calibrate with this measure uh, or this cable. Mm -hmm. But when uh, I'm gonna add the, the coax cable, it's gonna add some extra length to the to the um, coax cable. cable. Yeah. Yeah. So I just need to adjust for this extra length. Um, so uh, can easy. we see the cable? You connected the cable now to the yeah. coax from the. Can you show it on the camera? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. And uh, how did mm. you know how much you need to change the delay or the? Because you were changing uh, something. So how did you know what? How much you need to change it? You were looking at the chart. Yeah, I'm looking at the chart. So we want the starting position to be. Um, be in the uh, right. Um, oh, uh, at the right, I can show you on this one because it's easier to point. It's not easy to mm -hmm. where you see, but we wanted to start in this point. Mm -hmm. Here is like the, the the place we wanted to start. Mm -hmm. So you okay. kept changing the value until it was there. Correct. So I just uh, adjusted can you, can you the, do it again? the. I'm curious. Where did you click? What did yeah. you change? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. Let's see if we can try to do it again. So you see it here, and then where did you I connect click? the where cable? Did you click? Yeah, I go to offset em uh, embed. Ah, because you you are not doing it on. You are doing it directly on the. Yes. Okay. I didn't okay. See. Okay. So one way loss, and then the delay, mm -hmm. and then I, um, I have this wheel that I can mm -hmm. turn mm -hmm. on the instrument. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, and that one was maybe easy to see for you guys, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you can adjust the delay. Mm -hmm. uh, you have and the then place. we try to find like the circa. Mm -hmm. And this M M one, M two, M three. These are the frequencies. So uh, what we are looking for. Yeah. So uh, uh, our radio um, transmit um, on two point four, mm -hmm. but we use channel uh, zero to eighty. So two point four oh two to two point four eight mm -hmm. is like the optimal. So it's just like I show like the uh, the mid, the lower, and the the high part mm -hmm. of the the. Um, the band would we actually want to use, so that's our the the markers, mm -hmm. the easiest way for for me to do the tuning. So uh, then um, we're gonna solder on mm -hmm. uh, to a uh, DK where I've added some extra length mm -hmm. uh, to the antenna. Mm -hmm. So just to show you. Effect um, what will happen when you make the antenna shorter or longer. Yeah. Okay. So um, the actual I've added some extra copper mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. uh, in the same width as the um, as the um, the the antenna. Okay, I'm to add some extra. Yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> uh, so then I'm just gonna solder on. So uh, let's see how how real time we're gonna do this tuning. Uh, but yeah, how did you learn all these? Uh, <laughs> some uh, some from my studies, and then some you learn when you you start working. Uh, but I did my I did a master in. Electronic engineering with analog circuit design and um, uh, radio transmission as my main. Yeah. Nice. The last couple of years. Yeah. So, um, and then, uh, then you learn kind of to do. I didn't have just, I didn't have. Uh, I didn't specialize in antenna design, for instance, but um, that you kind of learn when you start working. 
here, <laughs> doing what I do at least. Let's see. It was stuck. Okay. I will turn off the fan as well, so you don't have to listen to. <laughs> I I don't hear it. I think no, okay. Zoom Zoom Good. is filtering out this. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. Uh, so now you are connecting the board to. Yes. So what you see now is actually um, uh, the the antenna on its own. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe I can do like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can see if I mm -hmm. affect the antenna. That's why it is important to place the board yeah, into so for instance, final if, system. If this is going to be a watch, for instance, maybe mm -hmm. I would place it close to, to my hand or to mm -hmm. see how it affects. Okay. So, um, and then uh, what you can do, you can either memorize uh, um, Smith charge and the impedance matching in your head, or <laughs> you can use the tool, <laughs> uh, which is what I prefer to do, which is like the, the easiest way to do this. Um, so uh, we uh, choose uh, where the antenna is at this moment. How do and you know? It's, and I look at the VNA. So you are looking at the M2 point. Yeah. Yes. Correct. So, what would be nice is to actually share uh, both screens with you. Let's see. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to be. No, it's not going to. You're not going to see all of it. What kind of software is this? This. This is uh, Smith Charge. Okay. Help. Okay. It, it's just called Smith. Okay. Yeah, it's just called Smith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here, basically, you can uh, see what kind of capacitor and inductor values you need to use. Or... Correct. Correct. So uh, uh, now our M2 is around here. Mm -hmm. And um, we just have to add the frequency that we're using. Uh, so, um, it's added there mm -hmm. and then you can easily see what components you want to use. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, for instance, here, uh, a shunt capacitor will bring us down to the, uh, impedance line. Uh, but then you can see that it's, it's not the correct placement here is the mm -hmm. 50 ohm. It's 50 so we mm -hmm. want it to be there. But this is why uh, for the monopole uh, quarter wave antenna, you could uh, you can use the length of the antenna uh, and the matching network. Mm -hmm. So what we see here that uh, the, the shunt component will bring us down, which is around uh, 0 0.8 picofarad, uh, but the length of the antenna is too long. Mm -hmm. So we want to use the decrease in antenna length to get us to here. So basically, we need to, we will change what inductance or what is? So what I will do first, I will solder on uh, um, uh, um, um, capacitor. <laughs> and uh, then I and will. And then we will make it shorter. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will make it shorter. So then we will try to see if we can. Oh, um, so the capacitor will move it uh, down, down. And then yeah. we need by cutting. Or making the short antenna, antenna length, we will we, move it to the left. We will move it to the left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So let's try. And then I guess you have to cut this. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't pieces worry. to see how how um, how it will look. But yeah. So then uh, I will just start by soldering on um, the capacitor. Yeah. So now you can see real time what I actually do when I do the tuning because it might be a bit time consuming you can you can switch the camera uh, yeah to that i can do i'm sorry let's see and then we can but this is all useful because uh for example i didn't know about these kind of tools and uh, no. it's like super helpful 
yeah it's quite nice to um, to have those uh, tools to help you calculate and that you know uh, not everything you learn in school is in the front of your forehead at all times <laughs> so then remembering how to draw and calculate on a smith charge i'm very glad that i can i'm able to use um a calculation tool <laughs> and i do this okay so you can see now i added a, a 0 0.8 picofarad oh, but i don't see the oh you don't i'm sorry let's see okay so oh, now okay. you can see <laughs> that I actually moved uh, the, um, the impedance down. A little bit. Maybe it's, maybe it's even a little bit uh, too much, no? Maybe even a little bit too much. That is correct. So optimal might have been 0 0.7 here. But let's start here and then uh, we'll adjust the length a bit. Mm -hmm. And if we see that... Um, uh, oh, okay, because when length. we adjust the length, uh, again, it will affect... It will affect the impedance as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do it. So, so can, can you it. show on camera what you are doing? Yeah. I will show you. So now I just connected it. Mm -hmm. And now I will do the recording here as well. So on... This, I, yeah, if you see the the more coppery colored, uh, it's like added at antenna yeah, length. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. So remove uh, a little bit and I'm curious yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so how it's going to look. How important is the information in the right window? Or you are only using the left one where the chart is? No, it's um, so the one on the right side is giving us the indication of also the length of the antenna because you want the dip to be on the um, um, uh, on the resonant frequency. Mm -hmm. So again, the bottom dip optimal would be uh, in, in two point four, mm -hmm. but it also shows off the the bandwidth of the antenna. Um, so. It's an important thing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the two parts of the antenna tuning. You you um, you do the impedance match, but you also uh, do to make sure that there, it's resonating at the correct frequency. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. But the easiest way to, to keep tuning it is to, to look at the, the impedance chart. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's try to to cut the antenna a bit then. How do you know how much? Uh, you again, have been doing this for a long time, you know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do very small parts out of a time to moving it a bit by bit by bit. So um, if I don't know how much I actually end up cutting, maybe like one one twenty of a millimeter. <laughs> At a time, it's kind of like, I, it's, I don't know. Oh, that's really, really tiny piece. Uh, it's uh, maybe sm not small. Let's say, let's say, let's see. I can see. It's just like, you know, when you start and then you, you just try as you go. <laughs> okay, maybe I will cut. Yeah, I would say, okay. Zero point uh, between zero point five and zero point eight of uh, millimeters okay. at a time. Yeah. So um, let's see. And then it's not as easy when it's uh, it's not a uh, actual made by the PCB. It's added after. Mm -hmm. But let's see how it looks. So yeah, I moved a bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
so and basically once you find the correct length then uh, mm -hmm. PCB should be adjusted yeah correct so now you can see that we mm -hmm. might want to increase the value of the capacitor, capacitor. so um, Uh, now you can see that we are around here. So we moved it to here. It, it will, will not be correct the way I'm doing it now, but it's it just to show you mm -hmm. that you might want to increase the capacitor a bit mm -hmm. to move it down here again. And then again, adjust the length to move more out here. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. basically plus 0 0.4. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so maybe I will uh, change it up to one picofarad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's just remove a bit more of the length, I think. Now we have to compare, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. And if you have different kind of antenna, like the F inverted antenna or something yeah. else, you do it a very similar way. You also make it shorter or something. Yeah, correct. So we uh, we try our very best to to find a good match with as few components as possible, because like in antenna designs the optimal is to, or with the printer one, it's to optimize the length of the antenna to, to be the correct resonance, uh, right? So um, the optimal would to just be adjust the length and then one shunt capacitor to, um, to mm -hmm. match the antenna. You have special soldering iron tip. Uh, yeah, it's like with a twin tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you solder it's... both ends at once? And yeah. Is it the solder? Uh -huh. Yeah, both. Yeah. You like it? So, yes. <laughs> it's very nice. It's not always like the best one for details. And yeah, but when you you solder off and on a component in, in one place and multiple times, it's very nice to use this uh, tweezer soldering pen. That mm -hmm. is very nice. We used to have uh, two soldering stations. Yeah, <laughs> so we could use both. <laughs> okay, we're closing in here. You can mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. this. I would say is a pretty, pretty, pretty good match. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see it also on the right uh, picture that now M two is yeah. at the bottom of the. Yeah. So you can. The, the length is uh, corrected so that the, the resonance frequency is good. Uh, and this also has a filtering effect, right? When the antenna, uh, it's optimal for receiving and transmitting on the frequency that we want to transmit and send on. Yeah. Um, and then the impedance match is pretty close. So how do you know what is the impedance? It's the fort ah, I see yeah, M2 you could is see. 60 and M1 is 45, that's what? Yeah. Okay. So the optimal, like in, in theory, is 50, mm -hmm. which is like this point, mm -hmm. only this point. But again, since you have a frequency span, it's not uh, possible to get all three markers in that small, mm -hmm. small space. But it's possible to get it pretty close. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so mm -hmm. I understand now. And yeah. uh, so, what else we could say about this? So, how do you know uh, when it's bad? When you need to adjust it? It would be more than like plus minus ten percent, or um, for instance, if the and the easiest thing is to see that you don't get a dip in the uh, resonance frequency mm -hmm. and then it's quite easy to see that okay it's not properly tu tuned mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then again, as we saw earlier, we saw that the the in the beginning the it's impedance very... was around Bad. here. Okay. It's not close to <clears throat> 50 ohm at all. Uh, so you want to adjust it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so... is it automatic? Like when you when you uh, find 50 ohms, is uh, also the deep going to be exactly at the resonance frequency? Yeah. It's kind of um, linked <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, because th- this is the, and that's why I say it's um, it's uh, the, the two parts you look at when you tune. You can see that the resonance frequency is the correct one and then the impedance, but they are linked. So of course, if the, if the impedance is spot on the resonance frequency, it's uh, mm-hmm. okay. But uh, uh, you can also kind of trick the impedance and that you're not able to do with the resonance frequency. Mm-hmm. So let's see, say that you have a, um, uh, if we ha- would have had the beginning we had, but the length would have been a bit too long on the antenna. Uh, you, you can kind of move the impedance. Um, okay, to 50, to but 50 the tool would be somewhere else, not Mm-hmm. Because the yes. antenna has to be also tweaked to the to the correct length, mm-hmm. the... right? Hey, I understand. Yeah, that. because again, you want the, the antenna length to be compliant with the waveguide. Frequ- yes, exactly. Yeah. So this is a quarter wave, so we want to tune it to uh, one fourth of the quarter uh, yeah, of the wave, um, and that's kind of how you see the resonance frequency. But with the impedance, if it's a bit off. With you, the length, you can trick it adding mm-hmm. more components, but you won't get to 50 ohm without adding the full P network. Yeah, I understand. And that's as I said earlier, when uh, with this printed PCB antenna, it's quite easy for you to adjust it to your specific design. If you choose an off the shelf antenna with a chip antenna, you're not able to um, adjust for the length or anything else. You're only able to adjust the impedance. Mm-hmm. And that's why we add multiple components. Uh, components. Mm-hmm. I understand. So that. the chip vendors has made them pre-made the antenna and then made it on or tested it on like reference boards. So that's also a thing when choosing an off-the-shelf antenna. Try to choose one that has a reference or a reference board that is almost the same size as the end product you're mm-hmm. making. Mm. But well, again, we will help you tune no matter what type of antenna you choose. So if you do a chip antenna or PCB printed antenna, it doesn't matter. I will still help you out with the tuning. (laughs) That's nice. So basically now we are finished. Everything what we have to do is connect antenna with the chip output and that's it. Yeah. So for instance here, you would get a report. I would say do these changes uh, and then Again, you produce a new prototype with the corrected length of the antenna, with the Correct corrected components. components values, and then you do a test of the performance. Mm-hmm. How does it, do you meet your requirements? If you don't, you have to think, what do I need to change to, to make it better or, yeah. But yeah. This was so, so good. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much, Kaya, You're for welcome. explaining all this. I, I have never seen uh, or I have never learned about uh, a lot of things what we what you were talking about so it's new for me and uh, what is important like if I would be designing board with antenna mm-hmm. now I know uh, what should be done after yeah. the antenna is designed and uh, yeah even if I don't have all the tools to do it I will know you can have a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then if you design and design with Nordic, you uh, you get some help as well. So that, that that can save actually a lot of money because all this equipment yeah. is expensive, correct? I don't extremely, know. Extremely, extremely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, um, most of our customers use our service, and then of course some of them do have their own equipment and do this their own. And again, if you uh, most if you use an off-the-shelf antenna, antenna vendors will tune or help tune your mm-hmm. antenna as well. But not everyone. Uh, <laughs> not everyone and not everyone will do it for free. Yeah. So um, it, it's definitely a, a, a benefit and, uh, to, uh, 
to um, to be able to do this service for our customers. So yeah, it's nice. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Okay. I I really hope uh, many people find this useful, and yeah. I found it useful. So thank Good. you very much for sharing all this your knowledge. Yeah, you're welcome, and uh, thanks for having me on. <laughs> and uh, that's everything. Thank you very much for watching this video. By the way, we are preparing some very interesting tutorials, so if you don't want to miss them, hit the subscribe button. If you want, you can also check out our Fedevel online courses, where you will find everything important from basic board design up to advanced hardware design and PCB layout. The link is in the description. That's all for this video. Thank you again. Don't forget to leave your comments and see you next time. Bye.